defect is corrected. So these are some of the test execution steps that you do. Then the other step is to evaluate exit criteria and reporting. So what do you do in exit evaluating exit criteria and reporting? Exit criteria evaluation is an activity where test execution is assessed against the defined objective. So in test planning, we have discussed that you define the exit criteria, define what, what you, you set a criteria that your test execution should fulfill. Only then you can exit any test phase, test execution phase. So for example, no severity one and two or no severe or no high severity and critical severity defect should be open all of them should be closed fixed and verified fixed and verified and closed so this is uh, these sort of criteria so you evaluate um, uh, the exit criteria whether the execution that you have done actually meets the exit criteria actually um, um, is assessed against the defined objective and if it meets that criteria you can complete the testing so this should be done for each test level so evaluating exit criteria it's it's not a one-time activity it should be done for each test level and then exit criteria is set um, based on risk assessment for each level and exit criteria evaluation ensures that we have done enough testing to exit testing or test level. So we define exit criteria in the test planning um, itself. And once uh, we, we do risk assessment, um, uh, once we meet the exist, exit criteria or once we um, ensure that we have um, uh, we, we have met um, the exit criteria it ensures that we have done enough testing and we can um, we can uh, finish our um, test level now we, or we can finish the testing now then major tasks in evaluating exit criteria what are the major tasks when you are evaluating the exit criteria you check test logs against the exit criteria specified in test plan. So as exit criteria is specified in test plan, um, so how do you um, evaluate the exit criteria? You, you check the test logs um, and so test log is like your test execution percentage. Um, you check defect raised, fixed and outstanding against the criteria specified in the plan. So exit criteria would be something uh, like minimum 95% um, test cases should have been executed to exit functional, um, functional test cycle. Um, so are all high and severe defects need to be fixed and verified to exit. Uh, exit uh, the test cycle so these are the kind of th these are some of examples which will be mentioned in the exit criteria so what you do is you uh, take the test logs uh, and test log is nothing but the actual um, daily summary kind of uh, report which shows what is the execution percentage as of today and you cross check it with the exit criteria specified in the plan and if um, the test execution percentage or the defect raised fixed outstanding uh, percentage um, meets the criteria then you you can exit um, your your um, test cycle then other task is to assess if more tests are needed or if the exist criteria specified should be changed okay so in case the exit criteria is not being met all right then you need to assess if more tests are need to be um, executed or more tests need to be added 
or um, you need to modify the test or you need to change the test uh, uh, change the exit criteria so this is the second step so based on the exit criteria you make assessment if more tests are required to fulfill exit criteria so suppose exit criteria says 95% uh, test cases should have been should should be executed to exit testing and you have just executed 80% of the test cases so you need to execute 15% more test cases in order to exit the test cycle then the other thing can be still there are some defects pending to be fixed you need to fix those uh, defects in order to exit the test cycle then project risks increased and so need to change exit criteria by consulting stakeholders so in case um, uh, the exit criteria that was mentioned was pretty um, was was not very strict but while when the testing started um, you you started to find lot many sev1 and sev2 defects um, and you are not able to um, kind of uh, release the software because of those seven sev1 and sev2 defects so you need to you, you can either uh, make your exit criteria more strict or lenient based on whether you want to release the software with with those um, uh, known issues so you need to consult the stakeholders so exit criteria can be modified but it's never recommended to modify exit criteria once it is set in the in the beginning but yes if stakeholders do agree that no we it is very critical to release the software then you need to consult with the stakeholders and make sure that every every defect that that is remaining goes into as um, goes as a known issue um, in with, with with the software um, known issue uh, template um, with the software so this this exit criteria can be changed can be um, make more strict or lenient after consulting with the stakeholders then writing a test summary report for stakeholders so that's another um, task in evaluating exit criteria so you write test summary report for the stakeholders so preparing the test summary report and distributing with all the stakeholders which helps stakeholders make the release decisions about the software so with with the exit criteria you prepare all the test summary report how the testing has has um, progressed what how many how much percentage of test cases have been executed um, what is the how many defects have been raised how many of them are pending and based on that test summary report um, stakeholders make decisions about releasing the software or not then the last is test closure activities in test closure activities you collect data from completed test test activities to consolidate experience major tasks in test closure activities are so test closure is just collection of data from completed test activities and to consolidate the whole test activity to consolidate whole test experience how it was how many test cases executed pass fail defects raised fixed still outstanding deferred so all all these activities all this data was will be collected and consolidate uh, consolidated so major tasks in test closure activities are check which plan deliverables have been delivered so like whatever you plan to deliver so like test strategy plan test cases extra extra so whether these um, um, plan deliverables are delivered or not all incident rep reports have been uh, have been resolved either they are fixed or they are deferred um, after consulting with stakeholders then finalize and archive testware for later use 
So you need to finalize an archive test where to test where is any test related documentation like test plans, test strategy, test cases, um, any test testing related document is testware. So you need to finalize all the testing related document or testware for later use. So like test case scripts, test environment, any other test infrastructure, you need to finalize it and archive it. Then other activities are handover testware to the maintenance organization. So it's not necessary that after uh, software is developed and released, um, so it's not necessary that the person or the organization who developed the software will be maintaining it. A maintenance organization can be different. So it is very necessary that you, whatever test, um, testware, like test cases, scripts, test plans, strategy that you have developed, it's, um, you need to archive it um, and you need to hand it to hand over uh, that testware to the maintenance organization because it, these, this testware will be um, required um, by the maintenance organization. So maintenance organization can be a different organization other than who developed the software and they will need the testware for maintenance changes. So uh, in, in maintenance uh, testing, as we discussed, like there, there will be, you know, new features coming and there will be, you know, production defects coming. So once those defects are fixed, um, maintenance testers um, need to fix those, um, need to verify those defects. So in order to verify uh, the defects, they need um, any sort of test cases that were already written uh, while the software was being developed. So all this testware needs to be archived and handed over to the maintenance organization. That's another um, test closure activity. Then other activities to evaluate the testing and analyze lessons learned for future releases and projects. That's the mo this is the most important closure activity to analyze, to evaluate and analyze testing and analyze lessons learned, what went wrong in this release, which you should never do in future um, releases. So what this does is it helps to improve the whole software development life cycle and test process and improve test design and execution methodologies for reducing invalid defects. So suppose in this test cycle, you found 200 defects in 500 test cases, um, that, that's a bit of concern. So uh, you can analyze what went wrong during development, what, wh where it was lacking during development, um, why were there so many defects? Was, this, was it because not good developing standards were followed? Uh, so you just need to dig the root cause and analyze uh, how the, the release um, has been, how the release has been, uh, has been done uh, and then which will help us to, to reduce any more defects and will help in future releases for testing and development activities. So to conclude, um, in this session, we learned about fundamental test process and all the major steps involved in the test process. So the fundamental test process consists of five major steps. First one is planning and control, analysis and design, and third is implementation and execution. Fourth is evaluating exit criteria and reporting. And finally, the test closure activities. So in planning, in test planning and control, you write your test plan and you figure out all the major aspects that are required in the test planning. In the control, control is an ongoing activity uh, wherein you see what's the progress of testing and you control if there is any lag in testing. 
then analysis and design you analyze test um, scenarios and then you design um, you you use certain test design techniques to design some of the tests and in implementation and execution you do the actual test implementation write the test cases and you um, prepare uh, the test environment and you do actual e test execution in this step and finally you evaluate the exit criteria you see how the testing has progressed uh, what is the current state of um, of the testing how the testing looks like right now and whether it meets the exit criteria defined during in in the test plan and if it meets the test plan you exit um, that test cycle and then you do the final um, test reporting and then finally you do the test closure activities wherein you just archive the test where uh, hand it over to the maintenance organizations for future use Thank you.